24 year old Angelina Herbert was walking in the woods. She was uh, returning a tin baking dish to the Dr Jackson Brown's house, who was her friend. Uh, she suffered from tuber tuberculosis, so she wasn't all there. And she was, according to her, attacked uh, and uh, attacked, beaten and raped by uh, somebody who she thought was Mingo Jack. I'll, I'll read later. I don't think it was him who did it. Mingo Jack was arrested at his home, and he was put in the lockup. Jailhouse was a double, I think it was <coughs> made of like two by fours, or two by sixes, or two by eight, the door was. Then up top it had the little iron bars, and it was about uh, eight by six in there. The crowd gathered around the lockup and they shouted uh, insults at him, you know, they said they were going to hang him. Now the constable who uh, had put him in the lockup assured him that he was going to be okay, but what was customary was to actually send prisoners who had been committed of serious crimes to the jail in Freehold, which is a much more safer jail. Around. Uh, 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock at night, they all came down and they chiseled holes into this little jail and they stuck the rifle in there and they shot. And as they shot, Mingo ran around inside or he crawled on his feet because it was all dirt in there and you can see where he went around and around. And when they opened it up, they hadn't. They found out that they hadn't shot him. So they go and get, they get the hammers and they break the door down. He ran inside the lockup from one cell to another. Soon the uh, blood began to collect on the floor, and the men uh, lynched him by uh, putting the rope around his neck and hanging him from the lockup door. There was a trial to try to determine who had committed these crimes, who had, who had hung him. It was a complete farce. So a lot of people were drunk on the stand. They they drank and they lied, and so it was it was like a kangaroo report. It was it was a complete farce. These men, it kind of seemed like they were probably these men were probably guilty because a lot of the stories that they were that they were coming up with on stand didn't, didn't really make a whole lot of sense. A couple men were arrested. A few of these men were actually arrested, but charges were never were never pressed or anything like that. But there was testimony that came out that made it seem pretty clear that Mingo Jack was not guilty or had absolutely nothing to do with what he had been uh, lynched for. A few years later, another man by the name of John Miller also confessed to the crime. He wasn't in Eatontown at the time of the confession. He was actually aboard a ship called the Congo. He was on his deathbed dying of uh, typhoid fever. This story soon made its way back to Eatontown, but by this time, a lot of the people had been ready to move on. They pretty much largely ignored John Miller's confession without looking into it too much further. Well, I first heard about the ghost story when I was reading Images of America and I saw, uh, along with the story about Mingo Jack, that there was the ghost that was seen over where he was lynched. I looked into this more and uh, I read in the Red Bank Registry that there were a few stories about the uh, sighting of go uh, Mingo Jack's ghost, some in the late 1880s and I think there were some as late as like the 1920s and uh, most of these articles stated, you know, that uh, his spirit was seen uh, floating over the pond here or near the lockup where he was lynched and um, um, over by his uh, grave in the Locust Grove Cemetery. I felt this presence as I was walking toward the corner where Mingo Jack was supposed to have been buried. And it felt like somebody was behind me. And so um, I turned around, I didn't see anyone. And I said, okay, and so I just kept on walking and I still felt that presence. And I turned around and there wasn't anyone there. 
So I just said, okay, Mingo, we know that you're still buried here. I started taking pictures. And I didn't realize it at the time until the pictures were developed that there was a circular bright orb in all the pictures in the spot where his body was supposed to have been. We were at the site where Mingo Jack was supposed to have been lynched. We got the eerie feeling. The wind came up, got very cold. So we figured out that was Mingo Jack. Every time we discussed Mingo Jack and we were outside or in a, a building that he had occupied, the weather changed. It got so windy and so dark that we had to leave. Uh, right after the lynching, there was some um, ghost sightings in this very area. Um, now I'm writing a book on this subject, and so what I decided to do was um, was make a sign. Um, basically, the sign, if we can read it here, it's got it's got stuff on it. It says uh, Mingo Jack lynched here, March 5th, 1886, Eatontown lockup. And what I did was is I um, made the sign and I nailed the sign into this post here, and. Um, I put the post into the ground, but now the post isn't really isn't really into the ground very well. It's not very sturdy in there. In fact, it would I'd say a pretty strong gust of wind would probably take would probably take uh, take the post over. Now, when I came back about a few days later, I noticed that the sign had been stripped. As you can see, it's laying on the ground now. It had been stripped uh, from the nails, literally. Uh, Somehow or another, then the uh, the sign was com some some force took this sign and completely stripped it off. And now, what I find particularly interesting is is what force could have possibly been strong enough to to take this sign off these nails like this and throw it onto the ground and yet leave this post which is wobbly standing upright. That to me is a mystery, and uh, I just wonder if um, it wasn't it wasn't the ghost of Mingo Jack. Once you bring the psychic to an area, you could get more activity. Because somehow, whatever we do energy-wise, and maybe they just feel comfortable because somebody is communicating or somebody is, is, is letting people know that they're there, that then they will begin to manifest more. And you'll have more activity. Now, do you feel that, you know, any of the murder or the death, do you feel it in this area? Yeah, I do feel it in this area. Stronger than over or maybe no, connected? No, you know, you're in this area. It could have been right behind, mm -hmm. but it's this area, not over there or there. Right. This is where you need to concentrate. When you approach this area, this is where I feel the murder. I see uh, like three or four people running. Uh, this is an area I, I, I don't like. Okay. I, I'm having a very strong reaction to it. A negative? Yes. A negative kind of reaction. This is definitely an area where, you know, I've got a chill that's different than the chill of the cold. Right, okay. It's and, internal, look at it. Yeah. And it is, um, it just gives me a very uneasy feeling. We would love to be able to capture you on film, on the tape recorder, to do something to manifest. It's okay to do this. No one is going to harm you and no one is afraid. Our purpose is to know that you exist. Is he happy where he is? Is he trapped? He's not trapped. Mm -mm. He's staying on his own? He's staying on his own. He's not trapped. He doesn't want to cross over. No, it, it, if he was, 
If he was trapped, it meant he didn't cross over. He crossed over. He's just but, lingering. Ooh. Something just walked through me. If there's anyone here that would like to speak with us, please speak now. If there's anyone here that would like to speak with us, please speak now. It's really difficult to say if the grounds are haunted or not, given the history behind it. It definitely gives it a creepy vibe and um, you do feel something different. 